Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the Lightroom Blog channel. It's Friday, so that makes it Photo Friday. And as distinct from Lightroom Tuesday, we're going to talk about stuff that isn't Lightroom, uh, but it is still going to be software based. So with all of the launch of Lightroom and stuff like that, there has been uh, confusion. And so a lot of people are, you know, saying they're really confused about the changes that Lightroom has been made. And because it switched from a perpetual version that they don't really trust Adobe and that they want to switch to something else. Personally, I still think that Lightroom Classic is the best option out there for pros because of the file management features and the new features that have been added to Lightroom Classic only add to that. I'm on a subscription. I'm on the all apps plan at the moment. I will add a disclaimer that I get that uh, because I am an Adobe community professional, um, but I would pay for it um, were I not. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at five alternatives in this video so that you can see what's out there and decide for yourself. So the first thing I'm actually going to look at is I'm going to look at Luminar. Now I'm going to bring this up because Luminar is a good editor and has lots of really cool features in it, some that aren't in Lightroom, uh, but it doesn't have any file ma management whatsoever. And now there is a preview out, of the, out there at the moment where it does give you uh, an idea of what's coming that looks very, very cool um, for file management features, but currently there are none. It's a good raw processor and like I say, it's got plenty of features. I do have a video on this and you can check it. All right, the second thing I'm going to look at, which I'm going to do a video on shortly, is Exposure X3 from Alien Skin, All right? So inside here, uh, you've got your grid, uh, you've got your preview kind of stuff. So uh, let me just go out here to the layout. So you've got layout options as well, you know, but you can add book. If you add a bookmark, you can go to and create like, you know, other drives or find other drives to add. You can also create collections as well from there. Right, so what can we say about that really? So let's make a collection from somewhere. Just jump out to the grid here. So I've created a collection here, so I'm just gonna go and gonna add a new collection. So I can actually right click and add to a collection as well. I don't have to do it from, uh, I'm gonna go new collection. You don't have to add it from the folders panel up here. So I can go water, for example, spell it right. Add it to water. Um, so I didn't add this one, so what I can do now is here, is I can actually, I'll show you the quick collection feature here really quickly. And I come down here and I can go quick collection so I can turn water into the quick collection. Then by pressing the L key, that will get added to water. Okay, uh, you have a metadata panel here where you can add information like keywords and stuff like that. And then of course, down here you have an option to filter by metadata, so you can search through metadata as well. So you have file management from that point of view. The next thing I'm gonna look at is Photo Raw. Uh, so this is the beta for 2018. So you have access to all of your local drives here, as well as cloud storage. And of course you can create catalog folders and you can manage stuff with albums. Uh, there's also an information panel in part of browse where you can add in your own metadata and you can have XF and IPTC information in there as well. So there is a little bit of file management within there as well. Uh, you can also filter by stuff as well. So there are stuff that will help you get around. Again, it's not as comprehensive as what is in Lightroom. Uh, I forgot to mention with uh, X3 that there are things like keywords and sets, and stuff like that. And you've got your keyword library with sets and things like that that you can apply. But I will go to that in more detail when I actually look at the application itself. All right, I'm also gonna look very quickly at Darktable, which is free and um, it's open source. It's not as good as the other ones as well. Uh, I find it to be a little bit clunky to be honest with you. Um, you do have import collections, information that you have in the file. You've got a metadata editor with stuff that you can put in and you've got export, all of that kind of stuff. And um, there is darkroom as well for applying uh, image edits. And there is a fair amount of stuff. The problem here is I don't think you can read the compressed graph files that I use. And um, so I can't show you an actual edit, but it does have shadows and highlights, brightness, saturation, and contrast, orientation, exposure, you know, various different things like that. So it is more than editable. Yes, I'm flying through this. I don't want it to be too long a video. And the last thing is something that I'm just gonna show you online, which is Capture One. Uh, so Capture One Pro is probably the main competitor because it would be the most feature rich in terms of looking like a raw processor. Um, a lot of the other apps use layering and things like that and masking, which are very, very cool things to have, but it's not quite the same thing as the full blown editing that you would have in Capture One or in Lightroom. So Capture One is another option as well. Now, if you really want to catalog, you need to use uh, their media app as well. 
um, which aren't quite as combined together. Now, I don't have Capture One. I haven't used Capture One since version 6. Uh, I think I missed a, I missed an upgrade cycle, uh, like by a week, and then I just didn't get it basically from there. So that is a quick look, folks, at the options you have. Now, apologies that I am doing this on the webcam. Uh, my cam link has arrived. Uh, that's, the cam link's actually down there. Uh, and it works, or it shows up anyway. But the problem is that I think my adapter is bust. And I'm, I've, I keep getting sent mini uh, HDMI cables instead of micro HDMI cables. So, hey, folks, if you like the video, please do hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And, of course, share it with your friends if that's your thing. I'd like, you know, you know, I'm doing these videos for free, so it would be nice to have more people see them. Uh Hit the notification bell if you want to get notified, folks. I will hopefully have a better camera in the next video, and I will see you in that one too. Thank you for watching.